Hi, this is Richard Sudlock, and welcome back to the Green Ninja course on climate science. This episode features a very brief perusal of the history of human energy consumption, and then leads into a discussion of modern trends in energy consumption, chiefly involving the U.S. Energy is the basis of all life forms. On Earth, the most fundamental energy source for living creatures is solar radiation, and the most important energy conversion is photosynthesis, or biological primary production, in which plants and phytoplankton convert solar radiation into biomass. Because almost all animals, including humans, cannot perform photosynthesis to live, to survive and thrive, they must access and use sources of energy that are outside of their bodies. So here's a small dose of, like, sociology or history or anthropology for thousands of years the primary focus of human family structures social groupings and, and political and economic institutions was obtaining energy either food or energy resources such as wood or peat for cooking and heating and lighting for thousands of years there was very little change in the complexity of human societies and not coincidentally in humanity's population or in its consumption footprint. Then humans discovered fossil fuels. This quote is from a publication of the U.S. Energy Information Agency. Widespread intensive use of fossil fuels freed human society from the limitations of natural energy flows. Tapping these ancient concentrated deposits of solar energy enormously multiplied the rate at which energy could be poured into the human economy. As a direct result, humans and human societies underwent profound social transformations with unprecedented speed. Earlier transitions, such as from human muscle power to animals or from animals to windmills, occurred over a much longer time and thus gave human social institutions much more time to adapt to the changes. There's lots of interesting food for thought along these lines, but we'll leave it for somebody else's sociology course. Fossil fuels provide astonishing amounts of concentrated energy at incredibly cheap prices. Even today, after oil prices have increased tenfold since 1999, actually more than tenfold, a, a gallon of gasoline costs less than $4. Now compare that to the price of a, I don't know, a gallon of double latte or beer or orange juice. This cheap energy has been the principal principal enabler of economic growth and expansion in the last 200 years. This quote is from Charlie Hall, a really astute ecological economist. Take the money out of the economy, and an economy could continue to function via barter, though in an awkward, limited, inefficient way. But take the energy out of the economy, and the economy would immediately contract immensely or stop altogether. We saw this pair of diagrams in episode 20. They illustrate the enormous increase in human consumption of energy over time. The diagram on the left shows that total energy used by humans has increased exponentially, as is particularly noticeable in the last two eras. But the important graph here is really the one on the right. It shows energy use per person. So by dividing energy use, total energy use, by population, it eliminates the role or the, the impact of population growth. So an average human today, it's anywhere on the planet average, consumes 200 times as much energy as a Paleolithic caveman, 20 times as much as an average human in early agricultural society, and three to four times as much as a human from about 100 years ago in the industrial society. But numbers for an average American are much higher than these. This graph from the Energy Information Society shows the energy mix in the U.S. since 1700. Through 1850, wood was the only game in town, and total energy use was low. In the late 1800s, coal started to replace wood, and by 1900, coal was king. But the use of oil, here labeled petroleum, and then natural gas, which started in the late 1800s, soared during and after World War II. And so did total energy use, partly due to a resurgence in coal and the development of nuclear power, but chiefly because oil and gas were so efficient and cheap. 
Well, it's finally time to talk about petroleum, the basis of modern complex society. We'll continue our examination of it in the next several episodes. Petroleum is a thick, flammable, yellow to black mixture of solid, liquid, and gaseous hydrocarbons that occurs naturally beneath Earth's surface. Hydrocarbons are organic compounds consisting of, unsurprisingly, hydrogen and carbon. Naturally occurring solid hydrocarbons aren't common, but they have many uses, for instance, paraffin. Naturally occurring liquid and gaseous hydrocarbons are the most abundant and the most valuable. The gases include propane, methane, butane, and ethane. Combined, these are termed natural gas. Natural gas has many uses. Uses, it's burned to generate electricity, heat, or cooking fires. It's used in making artificial fertilizers and in other sorts of manufacturing. And to a very, very, very limited extent, at least in the U.S., used for transportation. When it's underground, natural gas contains small droplets of liquid hydrocarbons, termed natural gas liquids, or NGLs. When natural gas rises to the Earth's surface, where the pressure and temperature are lower, some of the gas condenses to form liquid condensate. But together, the NGLs and the condensate comprise only about one-tenth of the liquid hydrocarbon total. The top dog, the sultan, the crux of the petroleum world is crude oil, which is in liquid form underground and at the surface. Refined crude oil fuels vast bulk of U.S. transportation needs and about a third of U.S. industrial needs and is um, similarly fundamental to all the economies of the world. And by the way, as an aside, you heard me refer to this earlier, some sources apply the term petroleum only to liquid hydrocarbons or even just to crude oil, but I use the more common, broader definition, which is liquid, solid, and gas. So here's a reminder about the link between fossil fuels and climate. When fossil fuels like petroleum or coal are burned in the air, carbon dioxide is released. Carbon dioxide is a potent greenhouse gas, and its atmospheric concentration has increased by 50% in the last 200 years, the exact time over which humans have discovered and used fossil fuels. Humans initially used very, very little or small amounts of petroleum for thousands of years, chiefly for fire and for warfare. In the Middle East, naphtha, tar, and kerosene uh, began to be uh, exploited in a very limited way in the 8th to 12th centuries. Now, these early users depended on small natural seeps where petroleum rises to the surface because the pressure underground is so high. But there aren't many of those, and they were easily uh, exhausted. Well, the demand for petroleum on the world market grew slowly, but it started to take off in the late 1800s. By about 1860, whale oil had been replaced in lamps by kerosene. Petroleum passed coal as the world's primary fuel source in 1940 and is still the most valuable commodity in the global marketplace. Let's look at U.S. consumption of energy resources. A healthy adult, like this attentive college student, produces about one kilowatt hour per day of power. Power is the amount of energy converted per unit time. So this is equivalent to the power produced by a 40-watt incandescent light bulb that's on and running 24 hours a day. In the U.S., an average American consumes about 91,000 kilowatt hours per year. Well, 90, 91,000 kilowatt hours per year is 249 kilowatt hours per day. But remember, a healthy adult only produces one kilowatt hour per day on his or her own. Those other 248 kilowatt hours a day that we use in America have to come from sources of energy outside of our bodies in order to survive and thrive, as I said in slide two. So we can think of the energy at our command as equivalent to the work that could be done by 248 energy slaves per American. Now the sources uh, that you see here are, are 
those that we saw um, in slide five, chiefly we're getting our energy from petroleum and coal. Per capita energy use in the U.S., which isn't shown on this graph, increased steadily in the 20th century until the oil crises of the 1970s, and it's been fairly constant since then. The blue curve at the top shows uh, the U.S. and Canada. And it says per capita use. Well, obviously, the U.S. and Americans and Canadians use far more energy per capita than people in the other regions or countries shown on this graph. Twice as much as those barbaric backward European nations like Austria and Sweden and France and Germany, the UK and Denmark. <clears throat> and though China's usage is increasing very rapidly, it's still only about a fifth of the U.S. per capita use. Here's another global comparison. The U.S., with about 4.5% of the world population, consumes almost a quarter of the world's oil and over one-fifth of all energy combined. Now, the percentages have dropped very slightly since these graphics were produced, but the numbers are still extraordinarily out of proportion compared to people in the other parts of the world. Americans are the world's foremost energy gluttons. What energy resources does the U.S. use? And what do we use the energy for? These questions are answered by this outstanding diagram produced every year by folks at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory using official U.S. figures. The boxes and the flow channels are scaled in size according to their numerical values. In this diagram, numbers are given in quadrillion BTUs, a common energy measure. Because 2011 U.S. power consumption was 97.3 quadrillion BTUs, as you see at the top of the graph, every number on the diagram is close to being a percentage, right? Because something divided by 97.3 is almost the same as something divided by 100. This diagram also shows the energy used by the residential, commercial, industrial, and transportation sectors in the U.S. You can see those on the, in the pink boxes on the right. For each of the four, the energy that's used is partly in the form of electricity, which comes out of the box in the top and middle of the diagram, and partly from energy resources in their direct form. So residential users consume 4.86 quadrillion BTUs of electricity. That's the orange flow channel that's coming in. And 4.83 quadrillion BTUs of natural gas. That's the blue flow channel. So I like everything about these diagrams a whole lot, except that they use the word petroleum. Where you see petroleum, the bottom left there, think oil. When I used to teach classes at uh, San Jose State with these episodes, I assigned a bunch of simple math problems using this diagram and its predecessors from previous years. We won't do